All right, welcome. I'm starting a, or restarting, or revisiting a series here, Library of Napoleonic Battles. Um, and here we go, by OSG, Operational Studies Group. It's Kevin Zucker's group. Uh, and for this one, I am focusing now on Spain. Um, we're looking at their uh, Napoleon Invades Spain. I think that's Volume 1 of Spain. And I'm picking uh, one of the smaller manageable scenarios to get re-familiar with the rules again, um, which I've done a review of also. So we're focusing on actually the end of the uh, British for a time, until Wellington comes back. Uh, the evacuation at La Coruna. Uh, Napoleon and Soult were in pursuit of um, John Moore, I believe it is. Yes, Sir John Moore here. Um, also, hand in hand with that, just to provide a little background here, uh, I'm leveraging from Osprey. They're nice, short, succinct, 97 pages. About, um, account of the battle, well, pretty much account of the campaign, just to give some historical background to it. So, um, this is what we're doing here. So, to start off, I want to go ahead and give a overview of the battle, or at least what led up to it. Uh, and there's a number of good slides here in this uh, in this Osprey book that I'm going to be referring to. I'm not necessarily going to give you an exhaustive or conclusive, but just kind of, for me, an overview of the battle. Um, the first place we'd go, nice artwork here, is page 6. Here we go. This is the actual campaign in Spain, October to December 1808. Um... Uh, the British apparently originated out of Lisbon. Portugal was their ally. Looks like they also landed some troops here in uh, Coruna initially. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. But they totally underestimated Napoleon, pretty much almost doubling his forces. So Napoleon did have an overwhelming advantage, um, but apparently they didn't realize that. Uh, out of Lisbon, uh, John Moore had to split his forces up. And there's a lot of accounts of, you know, the trouble that went through marching. Kind of hard to live off the land here in Spain. Later we'll see the winter intervenes. Um, but let's see, jumping to page 23 here. Let me see more detailed uh, Moore's landing and advance to Salamanca. Once again, my pronunciation is horrible. But uh, apparently I had a number of columns here. And ultimately, they concentrated at Salamanca, where they tried to decide what to do. Now, uh, initially, I think the intent was for more, we saw, to help the, the Spanish defenses near the border. Um, but by, before more could get anywhere near that, uh, they were overwhelmed by Napoleon's forces. Then Napoleon drove on Madrid. So then there were calls for uh, Moore's unit Moore's uh, forces to move to Madrid and help in its defense, but uh, before he could get there, it fell to Napoleon. So then I understand that he was in a position to threaten Napoleon's lines of communication back to France, and that's finally where he got Napoleon's um, attention here. So he concentrated here, and I think he put himself in a position then to threaten that. So, uh, we do see he starts threatening, and then Napoleon shows up, at least initially, with the 60,000 troops and uh, a number of other ones. And we see, ultimately, you know, they do some maneuvering. Napoleon's pursuing, and uh, this is right here where he concentrated again. Before then, uh, he started withdrawing to Karuna for evacuation. So, uh, in one sense... You know, you could say, some would say it was a failure. He never really engaged Napoleon. Um, but in another sense, it was a success because uh, when John, when his, when he showed up, he fully got the attention of Tola, who re Napoleon, who redirected his forces instead of <coughs> conquering easily southern Spain at this point in time, um, instead redirected and said, hey, this is his chance to crush the British Army, and at the time that was the only British Army really in existence. Uh, so part of John Moore's 
concern is he had to maintain the army intact. It was the only army the British had, so it was almost like waving a red flag in front of a bull, and Napoleon shifted and then started putting his forces in pursuit instead of continuing on to the south. So in that sense, some would say uh, John Moore's uh, activities were a success. He distracted Napoleon, pulled him off his uh, main battle plan. So we see here the actual retreat now. Uh, there's where we left off the other map, ca uh, concentrating at Ad Astorga. Again, I'm probably destroying the pronunciation. As Moore retreated, he barely kept ahead of the French. We see now Soult. Here's him doing the pursuit. He split off apparently two of his light brigades because he didn't know, wasn't sure at this point whether he wanted to evacuate from Karuna or Vigo or Vigo. So he detached these two brigades to go to Vigo, where ultimately they were, um, the light brigades were evacuated. But the main force he took to Karuna here. And now you have to take into effect the time of year. This is December, I believe. And it is winter time. So it was, uh, you know, lots of stories of how hard the march was for his forces, etc. But ultimately he got to Karuna before Solt could uh, catch up and engage him. Okay, so this is what sets up our battle here. Yeah, here the Osprey uh, book is giving an idea of how tough this retreat to Karuna and Vigo were. Or Vigo, uh, worst prolonged trials endured by the British Army in the peninsula. Mountainous terrain, bitter winter weather, <coughs> ragged and shoeless. Rear guard kept the French pursuit off, um, but it was tough maintaining discipline. Here's Black Bob Crawford, I think, who did maintain the discipline. So there, that's giving an example of how tough that march was. Here's his picture of the band of troops over the mountain passes during the dead of winter. And here we have the actual, um, looks like the initial positions before the day of battle we have over here in the scenario. And we do see some French troops coming up here. We see Salt. We see a number of divisions here. Uh, we've got some British back here. Paget. Here's the evacuation. They're going to be evacuating from Karuna. Uh, but, uh, you know, they were about to evacuate. Apparently they'd been here a few days setting up. And the British were about to evacuate. Then the French attack. So have to leave some forces here to delay them to allow the evacuation and from what I understand he had already loaded most of his cavalry and artillery so he's got a nominal amount of cavalry and artillery the British do and more does to face Solt here um, and it kinda looks like our setup here uh, we do see the British um, brigades here in place. Here's our General Moore. Uh, oh, this must be Paget back here. Okay. And then here's the evacuation point. Here's a British supply marker too. Um, there are some victory point hexes here and here. Um, should be one here too. So they have control there. Okay. Yeah, and here's the other one. So we got five victory points here. We've got some victory points back here. But this seems to be it. Uh, it looks like uh, he's got his cavalry on the flank, which I'm not seeing on this setup. But maybe that's this scenario just focuses on that. Oh, here's the cavalry right here. Uh, yeah, there he is. La I won't even try and pronounce him. But uh, here he's got the cavalry, I think. If we look at the battle, I think the French tried with their cavalry to flank over here. Paget switched up and blocked them. And ultimately, the British held them until nighttime, and they were then able to finish the evacuation. And the French found out the next day they're not there anymore. So, that is that seems to work here. Uh, I don't see Fraser. We'll see that. But 
that's okay. So this is the actual dispositions before the battle started. All right, let's do a brief look at the battle here. Um, again, from the Osprey book, I had to do a finagling here. It's across two pages. Um, and it does start here at phase one, and this looks similar to what we have on the map, too. Uh, there we go. See, Moore is presuming Sult will not attack. This is at 1.30. He begins his withdrawal to embark his army, ordering Paget's division to march to the port. And we did see uh, Paget's division there. Hold on. Yeah, I think it's over here. So it is in a position to march to the port, um, probably. We're going to see later in the battle he countermands that order and brings them back in here. Uh, Fraser's division, protect the heights, Paget bolster the white brigade more. The throw back its right flank to counter the un okay. Yeah, we see this here. It looks like a uh, flanking attack here. So we come up here. It looks like the main attack is going to be here, which, when I'm looking at the map, kind of makes sense, actually. You know, looking at this position here, uh, this is pretty strong here. Um, tied the pieces. Yeah, it's not in a special. That one's in a town. That's pretty tough, too. But um, this far flank here is not. Actually, this town is available to... Uh, to occupy and aid in that attack here. So yeah, this does seem like the weakest part here. And here's the French cavalry, and it looks like, we'll go back and look at the map, they swept down here to threaten <coughs> while the main attack went here. And I didn't see any attacks over here. Um, and again, like I said, these are uh, potentially strong positions. So. Um, to support Mermit's attack, uh, the Dragoons advance against Moore's right. In the second part of Mermit's attack, the 47th advances to outflank Moore's line. There they go, yeah. So one of the units is probably going to go for the outflank here. Um, the 30, 30, I don't know, the, the French there, advances towards, preceded by Voltaire. So apparently they advance towards Alvinia. Um, take a look back here. Yeah, right here. So it looks like the threat was against this whole flank here. Um, that looks like the initial attack. I was looking, it looks like the strongest units are over here. And uh, this looks like a great, I mean, these towns are not occupied. The French can move in here, if I read the rules right, and uh, they are not required to attack being in a town, but the British will be, which potentially we can force them out of the positions just by occupying these, if I read things right. So anyhow, the attacks occur here. Um, then we move around. Yeah, we don't see any attacks occurring over here. Uh, let's see. Paget returns to original position. Ward's brigade. As more steadies, the 42nd. So apparently the general is in the thick of things here. He falls wounded. Thomas Graham rides to the left from hope that he is now in command. Yep. And apparently this was an indecisive attack in the sense that uh, the French never really broke through. And then later that night, from what I read, um, the British were able to evacuate. Yep, there we go. And Moore's counterattack. So the main battle appeared here, Elvinia, and the flank. Okay, so that is helpful to know. Okay, here's f the second part of the battle, actually. Um, we were just seeing the first part there. The second part appears on the right. The Dragoons are pushed back. This is Paget's division moving up. Um, 22 and 23. Some other supporting British units. Uh, Elvinia, the French apparently take it looks like. Uh, and then they continue their attack, and they do finally attack here on their right flank. Advance into forcing back Hope's division here. We see that, but 
<clears throat> we don't see. We see the right side, the British right holds and actually advances and the British here I think are in a delay mode. This is until 6 p.m. Um, and it was a big value for Elvinia, so that apparently is where uh, a lot of combat took place here. And then they did push them back, but it wasn't enough to overrun the British. So that looks like the battle here. And we see here the aftermath. Um, yes, Sir John Moore was... He did ultimately die, and the British, though, were able to evacuate. So, in one sense, it was a success. The British army was intact, successfully evacuated. They had uh, pulled Napoleon's forces off of their main uh, conquest of southern Spain to do this. But in another sense, they, I mean, how can the public view an evacuation and a, with a withdrawal and an evacuation as a victory? So... Uh, there was kind of back and forth on that. So um, so that seems to be our battle here. Um, I don't know if this is Paget's division. And we've got, this could be Fraser back here. We'll see. So let's look real quick before we wrap this intro video up. Um, let's look at the study guide real quick and take a look at the victory conditions. Okay, here we are, the Battle of La Coruna, uh, 16 January, and we do see the duration is six turns, so we have six turns, and it does go into what's a pseudo night time I've, I've looked at here, that's not Coruna, there it is, yeah, these are interesting, so we're going to do a weather roll to start, it's going to be cloudy, this is kind of a... Slightly different rules here. We'll cover in a second. Um, no gorillas. That's nice. Uh, they have alternates. There's a damaged bridge at the start. I believe that's um, over here. But it's repaired. Yeah, right here. El Burgo. Bridge was repaired bef the night before the battle by French engineers. March orders at start. Each side can pick one, although... Uh, I don't think we have more than one formation. We have the second corps under assault here on the French. And we have more. Not very many leaders on the map for this game. Just got those two. And they look like they're officer commanders. Uh, let's see. Map area in play. Okay. Altidia is the Spanish garrison as it appears in all one. Okay. VPs earned as normal. Uh, all victory point locations count, so we see two back there. And here's a special one. Any British combat units which end the game north of the walled hex site 1804 count as exited. So that's a way they can get victory points is... Yeah, it must be north of this wall here. So any British units at the end of the game in here will be counted as evacuated. And there will be as ex, uh, exited, and they will count, I believe, to the victory points here, according to 26.3. Okay, looking at 26.3, it is a big. So we'll have to declare a general retreat, and the exiting player receives four victory points for each for exiting each friendly baggage train, which it says you can't in the special rules for the scenario for Karuna. But one victory point for every five combat units exited. That's, wow, that's going to be tough. Total number of victory points from exiting units may not exceed the total number of enemy combat units permanently eliminated or UAR. Uh, the French player, the British ex execute 25 units. The French lost five, so all five VPs are counted. Okay, so I see that. 25 divided by five is five VPs, and it equals that, so um, yeah, it's not a lot of victory points. you got to exit a lot of units to do that. At least five units. One, two. So if they can get five units on this side, they get one victory point. Hmm. Don't know if that's worth it. 
Well, yeah, 9 p.m. they began their general withdrawal. Still, to do that, they would have to give up these victory point hexes. Okay. So that's a consideration, but in general, the victory points are going to be awarded based on the usual losses, etc. So should be a relatively straight-up battle if the French can pull off getting these victory point hexes also. So I think that sets the stage. Um, <coughs> I do. I was looking at this before, trying to a beautiful map, but I'm always having problems with these slopes, and this is really a busy terrain kind of map here, and I was actually looking at sweeping the cavalry over here, trying to finagle an attack here. Uh, I've, for the life of me, I can't get a unit here. That would be great, because then I could put a unit here, and we've got zones of control. So basically, all I can do is push back. Elvinia is going to be tougher, um, because they're already in the town, and they get the defensive benefit. Now, this one... At first, you'd think they're stronger, but because you can, the French can occupy this town, again, that puts them in that situation where they're in, an, well, what's an improved position of town, etc., where they aren't required to attack. So they can move here and force the British to attack them in the town, which may cause them to fall back here. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, one other thing I'm going to try here as we tie up on the intro video is I also do have the battle in John Tiller or Wargame Design Studios um, uh, version of this. Obviously a bit more detailed, but we do see the forces arrayed co pretty much common here. Oops, I gotta stop using my scrolling. And let's see, for them the victory point hexes are here. Elvinia is a victory point hex. Here's a victory point hex. Let's see. Uh, 50 points. 50 points. 75 points if the French can get there. And I think over here we see... There's Paget. Okay. As we thought, here's the Spanish garrison. I think. And let's see what else we got. We got some more Spanish garrisons. Um, who is this over here? This is Bearsford's Brigade. Here's Frazier's division. Okay. That's stuff we just read about. Here's Frazier. Here's Paget. Um, I gotta stop doing that. And then here's the, uh, yeah, here's the Spanish garrison. Quality E. Not very great. And, uh, Karuna Garrison. Here's a supply point for the Spanish. Um, and this is actually the harbor. That's as far as the map goes. And you can see it is quite busy terrain. So we do have similar forces. Who's this guy over here? Oh yes, Crawford. The one we read about who kept the discipline during the retreat march. Um, and then over here, just looking, I think, uh, Lieutenant General, Major General, Major General. Here are the forces again, too, arrayed. Now, the interesting thing with this battle, though, is, um, let me take it out one. I think it will. There we go. Yeah, there are forces over here. I don't know what those are, but we identified this as Fraser. Here's Paget, and then here's, of course, the delaying forces here, and then over here we have, uh, didn't even mention these guys. I wonder if they were involved. Quality C, Legion, Hanoverian. That's interesting. Were they French minor allies? B, no. So there are forces here. Um, so it does look like it matches up. I'm assuming, yes, this will be the cavalry. Yep, there he is. La whatever. La Husse. So they're going to sweep here, maybe meet here. These guys are going to move potential. Well, I don't know about Fraser, but Paget at least move up to protect the flank. And then the main battle will kind of devolve here, too. So um, let's see. This scenario has, uh, I should say, 15 turns. So it looks like uh, two, 
per each. So I'm going to see if I can run this in parallel. I haven't quite... There is a way you can play this game that I just found and I'm still messing with. You can do what's called command control. Or I could run the AI and just let it battle itself. But uh, with command control, you actually pick the commanders you're going to control, maybe just uh, sold and the core and the divisions, give them orders, and then the AI does the rest. So I'm going to play around with that too and see um, how that works out. And uh, take a shot at potentially running this in parallel um, to to this one here uh, and just seeing. So this is half the turns. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it looks like six turns. Six times two is twelve, so um thinking that's what I'll do here. Let's see if I can do a split screen. Yeah, there we go. So here we go, fifteen. So yeah, it's about I run two of these turns for one of these turns. So um oh my. <laughs> it looks like it's already running here because I put them in um, AI mode. So we're even seeing the French moving to battle now automatically. Yeah, French in command control. So maybe I'll just run it AI. Here we go. We see the French moving up to engage in near Elvinia, kind of like the battle itself. Uh, it looks like... Um, yeah, we've got Dragoons here. It looks like they're sweeping the right flank. So I may keep this, I may not, but this was just to show you the battle. So there, we're holding on the French melee phase. So I think I'll end it here. I'm at 26 minutes. Again, I'm running long. But uh, anyway, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed, uh, click like, um, subscribe to see further battles. The next recording, hopefully I'll jump in and uh, do the first turn over here, uh, or at least the French phase. And then I'll see if we can run this in parallel. I may just run the AI. That's an idea. And we'll see how the battle goes. And uh, we can refer back to those images later just to see um, how we're doing with respect to the battle here. So we've got part one and part two. That's nice. Yeah, the French on the right didn't do... So that's it. I'm going to tie it up here. Uh, again, thanks for listening, and uh, see you at the next recording.